Straddling the Arctic Circle is a wild land. A boreal forest ecosystem uninhabited and uncultivated. With fewer than 50 visitors each year, it's a pristine sanctuary for wildlife and humans alike. for finding that fine line between isolation and independence. This remote and natural habitat presents an opportunity to find solitude and explore a refuge that is uniquely Canoodle. The Kanudi National Wildlife Refuge is a land sculpted by fire, ice, and flooding rivers. The refuge lies in the Kanudi and Kaikuk River basins and covers an area slightly larger than the state of Delaware. This region experiences one of the widest temperature ranges on Earth. Temperatures can range from minus 70 to over 90 degrees Fahrenheit within the year. Within its borders lies a patchwork of habitats, ranging from dry, windswept tundra uplands to valley bottom wetlands. The ecosystem is complex and dynamic. Lightning caused wildland fires burn through the refuge on a 40 to 100 year cycle. Meanwhile, the meandering Kanuri and Kaikuk rivers change the landscape on a more leisurely schedule. It is an intact boreal ecosystem that is largely uncrossed by roads and untouched by development. Though few people visit Kanuri, the refuge is full of activity and energy, especially in the summer season. Grizzly and black bear Moose, wolves, wolverine, lynx, and beaver share the refuge with a wide range of smaller mammals. Some animals pass through sporadically, like the migratory caribou from the western Arctic herd. They birth their young during the summer on the Arctic coastal plain of the North Slope and migrate south for the winter occasionally crossing or spending a few of the dark months of winter on Kanuri Refuge. Chinook and chum salmon also migrate to spawn in refuge waters after swimming more than a thousand miles up the Yukon and Kaikuk rivers. Other fish like sea fish, grayling, and northern pike also make seasonal migrations in refuge waters. But the crowning glory of Kanuri is the birds. Over 125 species of birds regularly use Kanuri in one or more seasons, including 48 kinds of shorebirds and waterfowl. Migratory birds were a primary reason for creating the refuge. White-fronted geese were specifically mentioned in the enabling legislation because it was recognized that Kanuri provides vital nesting areas. 
white wanted geese migrate here from their wintering areas in Louisiana, Texas, and Mexico by following the Central Flyway, which in the spring and fall can be a virtual river of birds that spans the North American continent. The Kenodi Valley is rich with waterfowl, wetlands, and other aquatic life. It is the seasonal rising and falling of river levels that recharges and nourishes the thousands of wetlands connected to the Kenodi and Koikuk rivers and their tributaries. One of the Kenodi refuges' main missions is to ensure that this natural water cycle is maintained because the refuge is nearly surrounded by highly mineralized uplands, future development could threaten this challenging goal. To many, the Knudi ecosystem is precious because it sustains more than fish and wildlife. It is also a fundamental part of the rural way of life for people who live near the refuge. For generations, families living in Alatna, Alcacket, Bedles and Evansville have hunted, fished, and trapped to support a subsistence lifestyle based upon this valuable landscape. The refuge continually seeks opportunities to work with local communities to gain an understanding and appreciation of traditional knowledge and customs. The ecological knowledge of the Khan and Inuit people has deepened our scientific understanding and provided insight prior to making management decisions. Kanuti is part of a system of more than 500 national wildlife refuges whose mission is to preserve a national network of land and waters for the conservation and management of the fish, wildlife, and plant resources for the benefit of present and future generations. A priority use of national wildlife refuges is to provide opportunities for wildlife-dependent recreation. On Kenodi, these opportunities include hunting, fishing, and trapping, and the continued subsistence activities by local rural residents. Visitors are encouraged to inquire about private lands owned by native people and corporations within Kenodi before traveling to the refuge. Kanudi offers recreationists a roadless experience while boating, camping, hiking, and river floating. It is an oasis in interior Alaska where rivers serve as traveling corridors for both people and wildlife. While experiencing the refuge, there is a true sense of solitude. On Kanudi, a visitor can travel for days without seeing another human. Kanudi is pristine, full of natural patterns still shaped by environmental processes and absent of the straight lines and cluttered associated with urban spaces. Experiencing this remote and rugged wilderness is a unique challenge to undertake but worth the effort for those prepared. With increased human use come increased management challenges. Visitors are encouraged to respect the refuge and are reminded to follow leave no trace principles, clean up all trash, inspect gear for invasive species. These unwanted hitchhikers can easily and quickly destroy a fragile ecosystem. If admirers are prepared and willing, each one can do their part to help keep Kanuni National Wildlife Refuge wild and free so the next generation can experience and discover what is uniquely Kanuri.